peeps, we are back. We are talking to Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, season three, episode one. The ladies of Salt Lake are back. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, so I just want to say that I think that the Salt Lake City editors have been unleashed, okay? I really enjoyed the beginning, the very beginning, when Jen was talking about how she makes all of her money. She's been doing this direct marketing for 20 years, 20 years, and she makes millions. Then they have Lisa and Meredith talking about their friendship, how strong their connection is. You know, they're sisters. You know, then you have bad weather, Heather and Whitney talking about their cousins, real cousins. They love each other so much and Heather trusts Whitney to never blow up on her. And oh my gosh, the way these relationships have deteriorated. And I would also like to say, that I am here for Meredith, I am now engaged Marks. Okay, what happened to the, I'm disengaging? No ma'am, no ma'am. Lisa called for her and Meredith has arrived. I'm just saying, this first episode of the season, I appreciate it. They did not give us two seconds to just enjoy peace and calm. They came right in ready to kill and I enjoy it. I really do. Hey, before we get into the show, there is a friend of joining the show. I think her name is Dana. I'm not really sure. I'm going off of memory, but I guess for some reason her and Jen do not hit it off. And I think we're gonna see some friction between the two of them later on this season. Jen goes out on her Instagram and she says about Dana, one, we don't know her. Two, don't come for me wearing McDougla's. McDougla? I know I'm saying that wrong and I apologize. Anyway, she says, don't come for me wearing McDougla 1984 prom dress. Three, save your pennies. You're the one not getting paid and work for free. Um, that was not nice. That was not nice. But let me just tell you, Dana is not here for the shit. Okay. So Dana replies back. She says, bitch, quit worrying about my McDouglas, which again, I'm saying wrong. Because where you're going, they don't make Gucci orange jumpsuits. And I own multiple properties and businesses. I don't steal from the elderly. I also don't work for free, but you wouldn't know anything about that because you've never worked a day in your life. Worry about paying your mother her retirement money back that you took from her knowing you were guilty. Clink, clink, bitch. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Um, welcome, Dana. Um, I appreciate you. And I too would like to know how is Jen gonna pay her mama back? Um, yeah, Jen, at this point in time, just just shut up, okay, ma'am? Just sit back quietly, you know, relax. Dear God, I am here for this. This is about to be a mess. Also, did anybody notice right after they played the flashbacks from 2019, all of a sudden they had those bells tolling? I said, oh gosh. These editors, I love y'all. Y'all are doing a good job. This is really good. We do see Whitney at her house and she's got the sound bowls, doing a sound bath therapy thing. And I said, you know what, please stop it. Okay, every Bravo franchise, the Housewives, Married to Medicine, you know, even Love and Marriage Huntsville, everybody's sound bathing. Everybody's got them bowls. But when you start to ask them for full details of what they're doing and why they're doing it, all of a sudden, nobody really knows the truth. So this bowl is for, I don't know, let me check my notes. Stop it with this, okay? Moving on. Well, the show starts off automatically. We see Lisa with her signature big gulp. I said, listen, somebody please, give her a deal. She needs to be doing commercials for 7-Eleven. This woman in her, in, you know, I had no idea what she was drinking in those big gulps because for the longest I kept saying, how does this woman keep her beautiful figure drinking big gulps like this? And turns out that it's Diet Coke. So that's how. 
We see Heather meet up with Lisa, which was a shock. And it was shocking for Heather too. Heather is still a people pleaser and I need her to stop doing that. Stop doing that. You are a grown woman, a multimillionaire. You're a business owner. You are a mom. You are a good person. Stop people pleasing, okay? You don't need to do that. Anyway, moving on, let me get off Heather's back. What I've done for the last 20 years is direct response marketing. I make millions. You came for her family? I didn't feel like I came for her family. I was in a blind rage. Regardless, it's on the table. You did, so you have to make it right. Is that how you really feel about Meredith? What do you think? I think that's how you really feel about Meredith. No, no. Because at the end of the day, I'm hearing rumors left, right, and center about Lisa, about Lisa. and am I spreading them? Never. Never gonna get it. Settle, settle, settle. Not attractive, ugly sex, it's gonna change your life. Let's switch that one over too. <laughs> that means that they still send people to my house to check on me. They still come to collect money. I went from 9,000 square feet to half of that. I also had to downsize the Shaw squad. What I don't want is to use a party as some platform for somebody to confront something. Do that shit someplace else. I have no idea what's going on with the other defendants in this case. I have no idea why they've taken a plea deal, but I'm not gonna take a plea deal when I'm not guilty, I'm innocent. What does John Barlow do for a living other than follow Lisa around? Honestly, I totally understand John Barlow. <laughs> well, She's questioning our, you know, finances yet I see SEC documents that their company was not making money. Are you insinuating that Lisa has slept with someone for money? Heather pretty much tells Lisa she needs to tuck tail and apologize. You came for that woman's family and now you need to apologize. And that is true. She came for that woman's family with vengeance. I mean, she was pissed. Girl, uh-uh, just go on and apologize. Meredith and Jen meet up, which is another, what the hell? You know what I mean? Of course we already knew because we've seen them, you know, on social media, but I thought, oh, well, how in the world did y'all two get together? And now I'm realizing that this season, it's a lot of convenient friendships which to me, I don't find them to be real friendships. I think that they are team ups. Okay, we are in an alliance. It's you and me versus them. You know what I mean? That's what I'm feeling this season is gonna be about. But you see Jen and Meredith, they're at the hot tubs, the same way we saw last season, I think it was Heather and Jen at the hot tubs. And Meredith's swimsuit was very interesting because it also matches one of her blazer outfits. I said, Meredith will go all the way for matching outfits that are pink. Anyway, Meredith says that there's all kinds of rumors out there about Lisa and her husband, but she doesn't, she's not going out there to tell everybody about it. She's not spreading rumors. But then later in the episode, she does just that. So, uh, ma'am, you are adding to the rumors, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. You know, Jen tells her that she's heard some of these rumors too, that Lisa may possibly be having an affair. And it's just really interesting, this conversation. But what I thought was the funniest was when Jen in her confessional says that Meredith should just monetize this situation and get her some t-shirts that says garbage bag whore. You know, and I said, listen, I, I, I don't think that I'd want a t-shirt that said garbage bag whore, but you know, Bitch, I'm worldwide is selling out. So why not? Why not? Uh, Heather, I don't appreciate your comments to Whitney's daughter. Okay. She's 12 years old. She's in the sixth grade. And for you to tell her to settle is a no-go. No-go. You would never be talking to my children. She doesn't have to settle number one number two the whole ugly sex will change your life no ma'am no ma'am she's 12. we are not talking about 12 year old about ugly sex or any kind of sex and when me and my daughter do have the conversation about sex it will be me and my daughter okay and the fact that justin and whitney laughed i don't get it there was nothing funny there nothing this little girl's moving too fast with her pros and cons list when Whitney saw her with her pros and cons list, that was the opportunity for her to say, mental note, me and 
My daughter needs to have a birds and a bees conversation. We need to sit down and have a full chat in private off camera, not on camera laughing and joking about pros and cons, ugly sex versus attractive sex and, and settling. No ma'am. But as a grown up, um, I would have to agree. <laughs> Ugly sex will change your life. I'm just saying, um, moving on, moving on. Whitney saying that all she had to do to remove herself from the Books of Mormon was to go to quitmormon.org. I was shocked. Um, but her saying that they track you, they know what you're doing, they stop by your house to collect your tides, I guess, was a bit shocking. Um, listen, I don't know anything about the Mormon religion, so I can't really say anything bad about them. Um, I do have family members who are Mormon and they are some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. I mean, they are upstanding, they're honest, they're loving. I, I don't know. Um, but my hope here is that Heather and her family, Whitney and her family, Justin and his side of the family can all just learn to love each other and get along with each other and be a happy family no matter what denomination you belong to. Um, I have members of my family who are all over the place when it comes to religion. I have friends from work who are atheists. And I never thought in my life that I would ever get along with someone who was atheist because that is totally against all of my thoughts and beliefs. But as friends, we're great. We're great as family, we are good. And I'm wishing nothing but the best for Heather and Whitney and all of them. Families should be able to be together, love each other, respect each other, and respect each other's boundaries when it comes to religious beliefs. And I definitely hope that Heather can decide what she wants to do with her family in this religion situation because she's tearing herself apart every season. And I, I, I want to see Heather happy. Now, let's talk about Jen and her downsizing. Uh, Ma'am, uh, get the hell on off my TV with this, okay? I don't give a damn about you downsizing to a 4,500 square feet home. You know what? Millions upon millions of people live in an 800 square feet place. I don't give a damn, okay? And you defrauded the elderly. So I really don't give a damn, okay? When you defraud the elderly, when you do crimes against elderly people and children, I don't mess with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those people are innocent. Elderly and, and children are innocent. You know, you preyed upon these people and it's just not okay. Not, on, not only that, did you pay your mama back? And on top of that, what are you doing having this big gigantic celebration for a coach? Now, I like the coach. I really do. And I appreciate him talking to her about this party and saying that he wasn't here for the BS. He doesn't want these ladies arguing and acting a fool at his party because this is supposed to be celebrating his birthday. I appreciate the coach. This man loves this woman. I mean, later in the episode, he breaks down crying during the toast. She's crying. You know, he doesn't want to lose his wife, but his wife was wrong and she deserves to go to jail. You defrauded these people for 20 years. You just told us at the beginning. Remember you told us? you know, with your glitter microphone, I make millions. Okay, well, go to jail. Okay, think about the millions. But she's having this party at Angie Kay's house. Well, first of all, can I just tell you that Angie Kay's house is everything. The view from outside on her deck was gorgeous. I loved it. I loved it. Um, the fact that Angie said that they had just moved in there and she hasn't even had a housewarming party yet, but here she is having this party for a coach Shaw and having all these strangers into her house, I said, well, ma'am, you sound like you really just didn't want to do it. So you should have just said no. But I'm assuming that the reason she really did it is to have the cameras at her house. And did anybody think that Angie's makeup was a little off? Her whole face looked like a different color than the rest of her body. It was off for me, but she's a very beautiful woman. Um, anyway, did Angie pay for this party or did 
Angie just host the party and help get everything set up, but Jen paid for it. I don't know, but it looks really, really bad, Jen. Yeah, for me, Jen having this party and everything and speaking to us about downsizing, I have zero sympathy. Um, and I don't think that Coach Shaw should have had a big party like this either. In my opinion, Jen should have had him a nice dinner down at the Applebee's. You know, invite his mama and his sisters and his fraternity brothers down to the Applebee's for the two for 20 meal. Mm -mm, no, ma'am. Pay your mama back. Okay, so I would like to just remind everyone, because we're going to be going into the territory of this craziness with Meredith and Lisa. Lisa says on a hot mic, Meredith, go fuck yourself. I'm done with her because I'm not a fucking whore and I don't cheat on my husband, her and her dumb fucking family that poses. Why don't you own a house? Oh, wait, you can't because your husband changes jobs every five minutes. Okay, remember, that's what she said. Then when they got to the reunion on the couch, when she was trying to do all of this apologizing, Meredith asked her why was she so angry with her in the first place? And she says that she had heard that Meredith said that she lived in a shitty house. Okay, so somebody told you that your friend of over 10 years, who you are like sisters, said that you live in a shitty house and all of a sudden she's the whore that had sex with everybody in New York. Her family poses and her husband changes jobs every five minutes. That's why they don't own a home. Okay, no, I would never go hard on a friend like that over a comment that she allegedly made. I would just call her up. Hey girl, such such told me that you said I live in a shitty house. Is that true? Okay, because we can talk about some things if you need to. Privately, you know, off camera. But Lisa Barlow likes to not only star, she likes to write, direct, and produce. Okay, so we see Meredith, you know, she is at her third rental house. I said, oh God, is Lisa telling the truth about y'all? You know, she says that it's not the truth. You know, it's not the truth. She's just not ready to settle down. I said, you were in your third house. Jen is in her third house. This, this get to be a lot. This get to be a lot. Heather, Whitney, and Lisa are still in their same homes. And I would just like to say, even though I think that Mary M. Cosby is batshit crazy, I absolutely miss her. And I miss her being in the confessionals just wilding out. Her confessional comments made the show for me. Now, Meredith getting in the kitchen with Seth and talking about these SCC rulings, talking about Lisa's marriage, her family and everything. Even though I enjoyed the content, I laughed my butt off. I thought, oh my God, Meredith is really engaged. She is bringing it. I do see both sides of this. You earlier said that you weren't going to bring up all of this stuff about Lisa and her family, but you did. And if you know that all of the things that Lisa said about your family hurt your husband's reputation, upset your children, why are you doing it to Lisa's children? Because you're bringing up her and her husband, which would affect her kids as well. However, I do want to know what exactly does John Barlow do? Because Lisa does make him seem more like a guy who's just following her around and doing what she tells him to do. It is a bit odd. Oh, earlier when Lisa was talking to Heather, trying to get advice, I thought, girl, you are just reaching for filming reasons because you don't need advice on this. You went after this woman's family. You talked such shit about her you know what you need to do in order for you and Meredith to get back to a place of decency at least. And you don't have to wait until the season has started to film to talk about it. You know what you said was wrong and I agree with Heather. You meant everything you said. You don't just pop off like that just out of nowhere and, th and the stuff not be something that you really believe or that you have thought about before. I believe that when you are drunk, or when you are angry and you have had it, you have you are done with the BS, that's when all the truth comes out, in my opinion. On Watch What Happens Live, Lisa and Whitney were on there together and they were trying to make us believe that their friendship is genuine. 
but their friendship looks like a friendship of convenience and alliance, if you ask me. Whitney on Watch What Happens Live says that she trusts Lisa more than Heather. I said, damn, you know, is it the end of the world? What is going on with Whitney? Okay, trust Lisa Barlow more than Heather. That's a sad state. I do appreciate that Heather was trying to hold Lisa accountable. I tell you what though, honey, listen, one girl on this show you don't want to cross is Meredith Marks. Meredith Marks is here for it. I think she's going to air out every rumor she's ever heard about Lisa. I mean, this woman is serious. And I laughed so hard when the producers asked her if she was insinuating that Lisa was sleeping with people. And she started sipping from her I Love NY glass. I said, oh God, Meredith, but Meredith. Listen, Meredith is not here for any of this foolishness. I don't think her and Lisa are going to become friends again. This is going to be rough. I would like to say that we did pick on John Barlow a little bit. You know, Meredith did when she was talking to Seth. But we do need to realize that Seth is not that great. You know, he's very inappropriate and he's a little bit of a misogynist. I mean, I still haven't forgot the way he acted regarding Whitney's breast. I don't think that's very becoming of a husband. It was just a bit much for me. All right, so before we get into the second half of the show, Meredith, during the episode, she was live tweeting, honey. Meredith is not here for it. She tweeted, we need to be accountable and responsible for our actions, even if they are not intentional because of a lack of self-control over emotions. Okay, so that's just one of her tweets. Then she tweeted, if you are hurt, then you should sit down and explain that, not rip into your sister during a childish tantrum. Sounds like a lot of excuses and not one I'm sorry. Some point in the episode when Lisa was talking to Seth, she said that she thought she was alone. Meredith tweeted alone question mark explanation and shows a clip from the video and you could see that someone from production was actually in Lisa's room so she knew she wasn't alone. Meredith also says love a good theme party. Some of the ladies are too into being someone they are not. Guess it's a theme party every day for some. Honey, listen, I don't know if she gave Brooks her Twitter. I have no idea, but she was here for the shit. Then she posted, of course it will be awkward. You spewed hate and lies about your sister and friend. You gave a half-ass apology filled with excuses over a month ago and done nothing since. Not surprising for someone who didn't call to check in when I said my father was dying. Oh boy. Meredith is not forgotten how the cast treated her when her dad died. And I wouldn't have forgotten either. That was straight up crazy. And just no sympathy for this woman's loss. No compassion. Then she posted, I think her humble pie tastes like bottom shelf tequila. <laughs> that took me out. I said, oh God, she's coming for the Vita. Stop it, ma'am. Sharif and his friends all showing up for this beautiful party. The decorations were incredible, but more than that, that food. You guys know I, I love to eat. I'm always watching the food. The food was amazing. They had a great time. I love the dancing, all of it. I love seeing Sharif's mom. It was really cute. Um, there was an awkward moment between John and Seth. They didn't know what to do. They were just staring at each other for a few minutes. Oh, let's just try to keep this between the wives. You know, you wearing a nice tie. Oh my gosh, you look so dapper. It was really odd. It really was. Heather trying to hook up with Big Daddy, Big Easy, Big Somebody. Some dude from the Celtics. Uh, Heather loves a black man, and I, and I can understand it. <laughs> I really can. Anyway. It means more to me than anything because we can still be here together to celebrate. Oh, uh, you know You like your tie. Thank you, man. You look sharp. Oh, so good. Good. Okay, um, you've had two months nearly now to reach out to me and tell me you want to talk to me. I just want you to know I love you and I'm really, really sorry. Leave me alone. 
I can't even believe I said those things. Like, I don't feel that way about me. I don't feel that way about you. I hope you can understand this. Like, I literally haven't been able to sleep. Like, it's been weighing on me. And, like, John's like, it's going to be okay. But, like, it doesn't feel like it. She never texted me. She texted She didn't text me. Like, she hasn't said anything. Right? No. Like, like, I never thought those things. I don't even think those things now. But, like, on the van on the way down, everyone's like, she's not your friend. Like, that's not your friend. And then, like, just hearing it over and over again. Does that make sense? Like, I don't even remember saying those things. Like, I understand Meredith was hurting. I was hurting, too. Bad news is she, she seems to be excusing it and not taking accountability for it. Is it an apology when you're excusing the behavior? Yes. Thank you, guys. Lisa was really thrown back when she saw Meredith at the party. And can I just say that Meredith looked gorgeous at that party. And her and Jen have the best confessional looks, if you ask me. They look beautiful in their confessionals. When Lisa gets to the party, she does say that if she was in Meredith's shoes, she would listen to the apology. She would accept the apology because she doesn't want to throw away a 10 year friendship. But all I have to say about that is lies. Because when you introduced us to your friend Angie last season or the season before, you said, oh my gosh, we used to work together. We used to go to Taco Bell every day for lunch. We've been friends for 20 years. And as soon as Angie ticked you off, you cut that woman off cold. So I think that's a lie. Heather also makes this comment about too much is given, much is owed or something like that about Meredith. I would say, uh, repeat that same comment to Lisa. This season is starting out very well. I mean, we've got Lisa versus Meredith, Heather versus Whitney, Jen versus the US government. You know what, I'm here for it. You know what, uh, Seth was not here for Lisa. He was not giving her two inches. Her apology was really not impressive. It really wasn't. She sat there the whole time making up excuses. I really don't feel that way. I don't feel that way. It was 107 excuses and not one sincere apology. And then she starts with the tears. Ma'am, wrap it up. Insane, done, out, we're finished. Girl, don't come here with these tears. She took zero accountability. And she was lying at the same time. She said that the whole trip up in the Sprinter van, the girls were telling her that Meredith was not her friend. I don't remember that. Peeps, get down in the comments and let me know. Was that happening? She had months of time that she could have reached out to Meredith and you wait until the cameras are rolling to bring this up, which is good housewife material. I'm just saying. And can I just throw something in here? How many episodes do you think we have with Jen pretending to be innocent. You know, how many more episodes is she gonna say, but I'm innocent, you know, before we get around to finding out, but you're really guilty. Um, I just wanna know, and Whitney and the girls planning this trip for Jen, talking about let's keep it close, uh, reach out to her legal team and find out if she has permission to leave the state. I'm just saying. Listen, if I've been friends with somebody for 10 years and they said that about me, the friendship is over. Would I listen to you and accept your apology? Absolutely, but would I ever forget? Absolutely not. Would I ever trust you with any of my information, anything about my family? Absolutely not. Would I still be on the show and work with you? Of course, but everything would be extremely cordial. Hello, goodbye, and that's it. We're done. You cannot be trusted. And then on the opposite side, being Lisa, hearing Meredith say all these things about her her business, her husband, same. We are done, You know, it will be the same, high and by, because both of you did the same thing to each other, just in different ways, and two wrongs don't make a right. Anyway, I am interested in seeing what happens between Heather and Whitney. I really miss bad weather already, and we haven't even seen them break up yet. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.